Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory on the Period OG. And in this episode, we are going to set up a waste free nuclear power situation. So, um, I went ahead as usual and set this up off camera to test it, make sure everything worked. And what I decided to do is rather than set up the full entire thing, I decided to use some of the materials uh, from the other productions over across the way there because we, you know, I, I had underclocked all of that stuff. So I had plenty of room. So we're basically, well, these two things in particular, we're going to, we're going to reuse the control rods and the steel beams from the main nuclear power plant production over there. Um, these are just our aluminum sheets that are, you know, are from our little aluminum setup, our temporary aluminum setup over there that we set up a, a couple of months ago that has turned into our permanent setup. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I, I got the other raw resources we're going to need. This is a, a nitrogen pipe that I ran um, all the way down here from, you know, way up uh, at our gas fracker. And then this pipe is uh, sulfuric acid coming from that refinery over there. Because here again, we had plenty of room on all of those machines to just increase the clock speed a little bit to provide the um, relatively little bit of extra that this, this setup is going to need. And then, of course, we're also going to need quartz, too, because we need to make silica for one of the things. Um, now, if I had not uh, or if I was not going to be using um, these already made products, then basically it would take this entire pad that you see here um, to set this up with all of the machines that we would need. Um, but, you know, in using these things, we, we've re reduced the number of machines that we're going to need uh, significantly. Uh, all right, so I've got a few extra things left over in there from my testing, and that's why it's all irradiated. Um, so we'll throw that stuff into the machines once they're set up. And, uh, yeah, so let's get started with this. I didn't do blueprints on this just because, you know, stuff is kind of spread out all over the place. A and B, the particle accelerator in particular, is too big for the blueprint maker anyways. Um, so we're just going to set it up manually and um, go from there. So let's go ahead and just run an extra line over here and we are going to start by uh, building the awesome sink because we're going to sink the plutonium rods when we're done with them and um, i just i have not i don't really have any use for them and i mentioned i think in one or two episodes back that if you end up using plutonium rods for fuel which you can um you can't you can't do anything with the waste on that. You'd have to store it permanently. So, you know, plus the fact that we're so in the end uh, to the end of this series, so near, that's what I'm trying to say. Sorry, it's kind of getting late. <laughs> uh, near to the end of the series. Um, I don't. I didn't fi figure it would be necessary to do that. Uh, we'll see, you know, when we get to that point in our next season, when 1.0 comes out, uh, you know, if we get to that point where we start making plutonium rods again, I'll decide if I want to actually try and use it for something. Okay, so anyway, uh, we've got the uh, the sink there. We're going to kind of build this backwards, uh, starting from the end machine. Uh, so let's go now to uh, production, and we want to build a manufacturer next. And that's going to go here. And this guy's what actually creates the plutonium rods themselves. All right, let's set that there. And... Yeah, that looks good. So we're going to set this to a plutonium fuel rods. We're not going to do it, uh, adjust the clock speeds yet until we get uh, the machine set up, and then we'll then we'll go through and do that. That's the one downside to not doing this in blueprints is you know with the blueprints, all that's already set up and ready to go the clock speeds, but that's okay. Um, all right, I think. Let's see what happens if we go there. Yep, perfect. Okay. And that's just going to send the rods directly into the sink. Uh, all right. Let's take a pull. And we want to line it up with this uh, connector here. And hook that up. Okay. Very good. Now, the next machine we want to set up is going to be um, an assembler. And the assembler is going to make the encased 
plutonium, yeah, enclosed plutonium rods, I think, or something. Uh, we'll figure it out here in a second. Uh, so we want to set this about, uh, probably right about there is good. Actually, you know what, though? We want to actually move it over a little bit further. So maybe more like about here. We'll see. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, and then this is going to be, yeah, in case plutonium cells. That's what this makes. Okay. Now, before we set the belt from that, I want to. I also want to get the. Um, the particle accelerator down because this thing is is huge. I mean, by way of comparison, it's very large, as you can see. Um, so let's see here. If we hold it in. And we probably want to go that way with it a little bit. And let's also push it back that way. And now that I'm looking at this, maybe, uh, whoops. Let's push it back that way one, maybe one more. And we might end up moving the assembler up just a little bit, just so they're all kind of even out up front here. Okay, and let's put that right there. Should be good. All right, and this will make plutonium pellets. Okay. So let's run the belt back here. I think I'll... Move that over, or, or back one, rather. Okay, and then we'll come back to... Uh, I think we'll come back to here. Yeah, see, that's not... This kind of doesn't go in there right, even if I hold this back a little bit. For some reason, it's kind of weird. So even if we hold it to here, so that the edges are even, it still doesn't quite go in there neatly. It's just, it's just kind of weird the way that this is positioned. So the only way I've been able to figure out how to get it neat, because even if even if we hold this out one more notch, it still isn't going to go in there right. See how it's still kind of crooked looking there? Uh, so what we have to do to get this to work is we need to hold this out to probably th there. And we have to run it around and bring it in this way to get it to go in straight. Yeah, so it's just really kind of bizarre. Uh, but that that's now straight. Okay, so this will feed in case plutonium cells it, it into this... Uh, manufacturer along with three other things that will hook up. You're going to need... Well, here, let's get the plutonium pellets hooked up first. So we'll do the same thing here. Bring this around to the here. That one should go in nice, nice straight U there. Uh, you're also going to need concrete. So let's set up a constructor here. And uh, that should be fine. This can go straight into here. And we'll set this to do concrete. And again, we'll adjust the clock speed in just a bit. <laughs> All right, good. Um, now, let's, uh, let, me, let me think now. What do I, what do I want to do next? Let's set up our um, blenders next. We're, we're going to actually need two blenders for this. Um, yeah, that's output. Okay, so this blender is going to make non-fissile uranium. So let's put that there, and that looks like that lines up fine with that. 
I might need to, I'm probably going to have to redo that uh, splitter right there, but that's fine. Let's put this here. And then that dry output can go into here. And then we want to set this to non-fissile uranium. This will also produce um, water, but we'll be able to use that water. We'll, we'll be able to recycle that water for the other blender, uh, which is going to be making nitric acid. All right, so let's grab the other blender, and we want its output pipe to line up with... I'll have to look and see what I did there. Yeah, with, with this pipe here. So I think that's where we want this. Those pipes line up? Yeah. And we need room for belts, too, so I think we'll... Well, let's actually hold that back a little bit. So um, I have a screenshot of, of my test uh, on, a, on my other monitor in case you guys are wondering why I keep looking over there <laughs> since I don't have these blue printed. Uh, all right. Yeah, we need to go to here. Bring up my pipe toolbar. And I want this to be on horizontal to vertical. I want to bring it up. Okay, looks like I'm probably going to have to put that. I'm going to have to hold it out further. So, I might, I might need to hold this back a little bit more. Let's just see what happens here. Has to go noodle. Okay. I need to I need to get a belt underneath here. So let's run that right now just so we see what our clearance is. Okay, let's, oh, damn it. Okay, just run that there for the moment. Now, if we put this here, yeah, that works. Looks good. Okay. So this will be the nitric acid. So we want to set this to nitric acid. And notice that it takes a uh, water and this outputs water. So what we're going to do now is we're going to run a pipe. Get back up in the air here. Um, let's run this over to here. Okay. Okay, let's set this to pipes. And it looks like I went up with this. Yeah, I think I, we went up with this because it's got a... Um, it's got to go over some other, some other pipes or other conveyors. So I'm going to try, though, and see if we can work it here. Oh, wait, hold on. This needs to go up. Okay. Hmm. That's too far the other way. Can I do this? Do a control nudge, which is a half nudge. There. That looks good. Okay, 
I'm gonna just run this back to here. This, bring it over here. And, uh, let's see, that needs to go there. Okay, so let's put this, I think it's going to need a half nudge back this way now, maybe. Nope. It was right. It was good where it was. Cut it out. There. Okay, so that'll provide the water input for this. Now, one thing we are going to have to do, though, is we're going to have to temporarily prime this uh, with a normal water pump just to get it started. But once it, once it gets going, then then we'll be fine. So let's put that there, that there, and we're just gonna run this out to here. And once, like I said, once I get this all up and running, then I can I'll be able to remove the water extractor. Can I do noodle? Yeah, there we go. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm not even worried about that in terms of clocking it because it's just temporary. So we'll just let it run at full speed. Well, the other thing I want to do, though, also here is I, I want to make sure I don't I probably don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it anyway just to be on the safe side. I'm going to put a valve here uh, so we don't get any backflow um, back into that machine. Excellent. Okay. Now, you also are going to need um, silica and sulfuric acid. So let's do the silica next. And if we put the... Okay, that's going to be right in the middle of this tile. We have room. We put this right here. Uh, is that clipping? I think it's okay. Oh, this is... Wait a second. Um, oh. Yeah, okay, here. Let's do this. We'll run this around here. Like that. And I'll just put a lift on here. Oh, shit, though. That's going to clip, isn't it? Damn it, Jim. Okay, I need to, I need to push this back further. So let's go maybe to there. And we can put that lift there for the input. Remove this. All right, and then this is going to make silica. And again, we'll set the clock speed later. I don't. This little plunger thing does go up and down, but yeah, there's there's a couple of inches of clearance for that, so I'm not going to worry about that. 
Okay, let's go back over here and get power connected. So I think what I want to do here is move this pole over a bit. Maybe even one more than that. Okay, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. And we'll reconnect you to there and you to there and you to there. God damn it. We can't do that without clipping. All right. Can't have clipping. So what we'll do instead is we'll run this back to here. And that can go there. And then we need to get power over to these guys anyway. Uh, where's their... Oh, their insulators are on the other side. Okay, let's run those from the other side. We do need to get power over to here as well. So that one will set up right along here. Is that clip? Nope, I think we're looking good. I guess the particle accelerator hooked up. All right, now we need to get power to these two guys. So let's get right about in the middle-ish there. That looks good. And I think I'm going to remove these. That one's already filled up, eh? All right, that's what we have Mark II power pools for. I've got a, you know, the Mark III too, but I've never actually used it. Really? That's, oh shit. I guess that wire would be too long. All right, let's just go about halfway or so. There. You're going to also need power, so we'll put another line right about here. Beautiful. All right, we're getting close. So, you uh, are going to need iron plates. So, we're going to grab another constructor and just put you right here. And set you to make iron plates. All right, that takes care of that. Let's get, see, power connectors on this side. Let's actually run you down here. We don't need these two any longer. Move that down one more notch just so it's a little more perpendicular with that. Okay, good. Uh, we're going to need a smelter. Because I'm feeding raw iron ore into this. Okay, that takes care of that. And then over here now, we're going to need another assembler. Uh, excuse me. Just looking at this. Okay. So 
So let's grab this assembler and we'll line it up with that hole there. And this one is going to make uh, heat, yeah, heat sinks. And I'm just gonna, using the normal recipe for it because um, it uses the Alclad sheets. This one uses the you know rubber and the containers, but the Alclad this uses Alclad and copper sheeting, so it's just easier for this particular setup. Um, I don't know if I can run this through here without it clipping. Let's just see what it does. Yeah, that's clipping. Okay. Well, then we'll run this one from, from the side then. There we go. Okay, the inputs on this, um, we're gonna need, we're bringing in the outclad sheet, we need to do the copper sheets. So we'll set another constructor right here. And we're just doing the basic uh, copper sheet recipe. And then again, since we're bringing in raw copper ore, we're gonna need a smelter as well. There we go. All right, both of you are going to need power. Um, why don't we run a pole to here? Power those two. I think that's it for our machines. Now we just got to hook everything up and adjust our clock speed. Okay, so let's let's do this. Um, we have to set this up based upon 20 uranium waste per minute because that's what we're producing. Each one of our nuclear power plants produces 10 waste per minute. Um, and this guy takes uranium waste at 37 and a half per minute. And this guy takes 25 uranium waste per minute. So I think what uh, what we can do here is if we set this to where this becomes 15, which I think is 10. All uh, right, wait, no, it's 20. Okay. Right. Okay. So that sets that to 15, which then is going to output 20 non-fissile uranium. Okay, so now we need to set this so that it takes in 20 non-fissile. Um, and that means it's going to have to be 5? 6. Yeah, 6. There we go. Okay, because this whole setup, it, I mean, if we want it to be 100% efficient, which we do, because the whole idea is to get rid of the waste permanently, uh, we have to set all of these machines up based upon, again, 20 uranium waste per minute. If we ever set up another nuclear power plant, then, of course, we'd have to adjust it uh, for that, too. But the cool thing is that, um, you know, this is now underclocked to 40 percent, and this one is underclocked to 20 percent, which means, you know, we could support maybe three, actually three more. Um, yeah, we, we could support a total of five because th then this would handle 50 per minute if we were going to do that. Very good. Okay, so now that we've got those two machines set, then now we just have to set up everything else to match. Uh, so now you're going to need 10 silica per minute. So let's adjust you to 10 per minute. All right, and all of our inputs, uh, I've I've already adjusted them or accounted, you know, for them. So you know, we'll have enough, we'll have enough stuff for that. 
Okay. Let's grab you and run you down here. And when we get to about here, we're going to need to put a lift to go up over that belt. Um, actually, hold on. Before we do that, we've got to... We gotta get the uranium waste over here. Whoops. Yeah, we'll run that right down the seam. So I'll have to reset that splitter, but that's not a big deal. So yeah, we could actually just go with this and we'll be good. Very good. Okay, that'll get the quartz in there uh, and the silica going. So let's remove all of this. And grab this splitter with the yeah, input on that side. And it's... It's not um, snapping properly, so... Let's see if the waste comes through. Yep, it does. Okay, so we're we're good. Whoop. Oh shit! I picked up uranium waste. Well, I guess I did. Yeah. All right, let's just go dump this over in here for the moment. In fact, um, let's let's actually grab all of this stuff, and we'll just preload. The machines. So you need control rods. We'll load you up. Uh, you also need heat sinks. So again, this was just the stuff that was left over from my my testing. I guess we could load that up with steel beams too. Okay, let's load you up with uranium waste. Uh, oh wow, that took all of them. Okay. That's fine. We want this to be loaded up before that anyway. And let's see, we also have some non-fissile and some encased plutonium cells. So let's put the non-fissile in here. And the plutonium cells can go in here. Uh, oh, no, the, the pellets need to go in here, right. And then the cells go in here. Did that get all the irradiated stuff out of our inventory? I think it did. So it looks like I, I have the persistent radiation bug. And I have to relog to get rid of that. Okay, we're back. I do have... Yeah, I've got some iodine filters. Uh, all right, so... <coughs> excuse me. Let's... Uh, we've adjusted this machine. So this machine needs six nitric acid. So we need to downclock this to do six. And when we do that, notice that it then changes this to six water per minute. And this just so happens to output six water per minute. So it works out perfectly. But again, we just have to prime it first with, with that. Okay, uh, you're going to need two iron plates per minute. And that means you need three ingots per minute. Doesn't uh, doesn't use a whole lot of stuff. Uh, let's get our nitrogen gas hooked up. It's going to need 24 per minute, but, you know, it's just going to take whatever we give it here. Um... Oh, uh, you know what? I didn't line that up correctly. Son of a bitch. Guess I had that over further. Um, that probably then also means that that's not going to line up either. <sighs> well, that one will be easy to fix. This one, we're just going to curve it because I'm not rerunning that one. That one took a long time to do because it way the hell up in the mountains. So what we'll do is we'll bring this 
here. Um, yeah, let's bring that to there. Put that back on horizontal to vertical. And I think if we go here and then do that. Nope, that was too close. We might need to go back two on this. Let's see. One would have done the trick. There, that looks good. Okay, let's paint these white. White for nitrogen. I like to make the collars and the other pieces black just for contrast. Okay, so that should be feeding nitrogen into here. <clears throat> it's a beautiful thing. So uh, this, we should be able to reposition back that way. I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. So we're going to have to do the same thing here. Let's put a pipe riser there. Put that into there. Um, we'll keep this one high, actually. We want to be here. Is that straight? It looks like it. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's get rid of this. And run you down to here. You're going to have to go down and under this. And bring you over to uh, well actually will that line up with it huh. that should line up oh it doesn't why the hell not all right guess we're gonna have to eyeball it right about there looks correct take that out Redo this and do that. We want that stuff to be black. And then we'll make the sulfuric acid pipe yellow. I have no idea if sulfuric acid is actually yellow. It might be. I learned a hard lesson about, I don't know if it was sulfuric acid or hydrochloric acid, but when I was a little boy, well, I wasn't a little boy. I was probably, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old. My father had a jug of, it was either hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid. I don't remember, some kind of acid. Um, back out in our little shed in our backyard and so me being you know the curious little boy that I was found this you know we'll, we'll, we'll say it was hydrochloric acid on the shelf so I took the lid off you know it was, it was in a plastic gallon jug I took the lid off and I smelled it and the, <laughs> the fumes the acid fumes got all up into my nose and just burned like a motherfucker and I was like wow so that uh, made me more cautious about sniffing things in the future. And so now I'm very careful before I sniff acid. <laughs> so anyway, that is a true story, though. That did happen to me. Unfortunately, it didn't do any permanent damage. I don't think it did anyways. But yeah, it hurt like a mother. The fumes, nasty. Any hoozle. Okay, so we should have our 
Uh, oh, okay, why do we not have any sulfuric acid in this pipe? Probably because this didn't actually connect over here. Um, well, even if it did, let's reconnect it just to make sure. Yeah, I think it might be that little piece of pipe there that's wonky. Now we have sulfuric acid. Just don't smell it. Don't sniff it. Okay, looking good. Okay, so you got your nitrogen gas, you got your water, you just need your iron plates. Um, this is probably not lined up correctly either, so let's run it back from here. And we'll put it... There. Can I... Yeah, we're going to have to S-curve that one. That's fine, though. That doesn't look bad. Okay. Um, our concrete's going to have to slide over to the... Uh, yeah, to the left. Can we just bring it straight this way, or is it going to run into anything? I think we can. I think we should be able to do the, uh, right here, I think. Yep. All right, that pole is going to have to be moved over. Here, let's actually move it to the, here. Did we... We must have run that all the way from back there. Yeah, okay. That gets our limestone connected. Oh, we didn't... I don't think we adjusted these other machines, so let's do that next. All right, so you are producing six plutonium pellet per minute. Um, so we need to set this to uh, four? Three. Yep. Okay, so that's six plutonium, which means the concrete then needs to be set to 12 per minute. Okay, that takes care of that. Now you're outputting three encased plutonium per minute. So we need this. I think that this one was 0.1. Uh, yeah. So that changes that to three per minute. Um, so that means the steel beams. Oh, no, we're running the steel beam straight in here. Okay. I've already adjusted the other machine and the electromagnetics. But the heat sinks, we're making those, right? Yes. Okay, so those need to be set to one per minute. So as you can see, again, there's lots of room on the uh, on these machines for us to be able to expand this. Um, I, I haven't done the math on all the other machines, but we know for sure that that these two guys could support up to five reactors. Uh, and that's not with you know that's with no overclocking either. You could even go more if you overclock. Okay, so that's set to one per minute. That means we need three copper sheet per minute, and that means we need six copper ingot per minute. And I think everything is set. Okay, let's get uh, our copper and all the rest of that down here. Okay, that one's going to have to S-curve into here too. Six carat copper. Um, are we going to be able to get under? Oh, this is yeah. No, we're not going to. I don't think we're going to be able to go directly under that. So we're going to have to do a little curve thingy. Yeah, it's going to clip. Shit. 
That sucks. Uh, God damn it. All right, if we're gonna have to curve this, I think I want to do the do it this way. Bring this out to here, and then this back this way. Well, that's not going to look very good either, is it? Okay, let's run this to here. Yep, yeah, that'll have to do. Now it's going to mess these up. How did I... How did I not see that? God damn it. Well, uh, they're just going to have to curve in. That's all there is to it. Unless we... Oh, we could use a lift. Yeah, maybe we'll use a lift on... On these here. Let's bring this down to here. <laughs> Those would go in nice and straight if uh, if I had to move that belt out. All right. Um, let's see if we can redo this a little bit different. We could try a lift here, I guess, actually. Oh, yeah. That's the answer to that. Uh, except for it's, uh, it's still not lined up right, but... See, this is what happens when you don't do blueprints. <laughs> oh, well. Um, if I really wanted to be picky about this, I would do this instead. Oh, uh, that's going to have to go there. Except for we have to hold it back a little bit. There. I just like nice 90 degree curves whenever possible, right? Okay, so, um, yeah, here we're going to need to put a lift in place too, at least to get it over the top of that. Um, let's run this down here. And again, I'm, I'm actually using way more room than I need to, but I left it this way mostly just to show you how, how big of an area I would have needed if I would, would have built all of this as a, you know, a self-contained kind of situation. All right, so we should be able to do this and then do this. We don't need to do it that way. I'm making this complicated. More complicated needs to be. Just bring this to here. Uh, probably to there. Yep. Is that actually going to go in there, though? Guess we'll find out in a second. I might have to reset that belt. 
because it looks like it's stopping at the at the riser there and not going all the way in but maybe it will let's see what it does yep it's working okay fair enough and uh, I th think that gets everything hooked up. Oh, that's all just backed up because we preloaded. That gap is from the train, and whenever the train drops stuff off, it stops the, the flow of materials until it finishes unloading. In case you're wondering where that came from. All right, I think we're good here. Um, so let's see. Are you full of water? Yes, you are. Okay, so we should be able to remove this now. That's almost only needed to prime everything. And then this will just feed six water per minute into here for its six water per minute. And recycle everything. Okay, so you see, you got your iron plates, you got your water, you got your nitrogen, and you're producing your nit nitric, a uh, yeah, nitric acid, and you're good. You should be getting enough sulfuric acid for the next cycle. Um, everything else is like, well, we, again, we preloaded this anyway. I want to make sure this gets to 12 before the next cycle or it's going to stall out. It sh shouldn't, but let's see what it does. Okay, it's not going to. Um... Hmm. Okay, so let's take a look at that. We're going to have to troubleshoot that. Everything else is, yeah, you're you're fine there. Oh, we didn't hook up the waste to this. Why that doesn't key in on that belt, but it doesn't. Um, kind of hard to s here. Let's try it from this side. It's kind of hard to line it up because all that other shit's in the way, the text and stuff. Um, all right, we're going to have to redo... Oh, it just came through. I guess I just missed it on the alternate one. Okay. Let's take this extra waste and throw that in there. I'm going to continue letting it send stuff down, though, to the storage, too, until we know this is fully operational. Okay, so we'll let that fill up. Uh, we'll come back and troubleshoot the sulfuric acid thing in a second. Um, you should be easily keeping up. You just need f four on the next cycle. Three. And... Barely made it, but that's fine. Okay. Uh, you got plenty of sheets. 
long as this gets to six on the next cycle, we'll be fine here. Plus, we preloaded a bunch of those anyways. In fact, I still have uh, a few more we can throw in there. Let's get rid of that. Rods and the beams are completely loaded up. Yeah, and this is... Look at that. We're making our first plutonium fuel rod. Very slow, though. Okay, so I think we're running good except for the sulfuric acid. Why do you not have any plutonium pellets? Oh, because this hasn't started yet. That's why. Okay. Fair enough. So... You're having no problem with nitrogen, no problem with water, no problem with iron plates. Um, at least I don't think you are. Yeah, I'm sure that will be done before the other one cycles. Let's just double check it. And this, actually, this does two plates at a time anyway. Ooh. Yeah, it just, <laughs> it just barely made it in. Okay, close enough. Uh, all right, so sulfuric acid. Why are you lagging behind? Oh, you're not now. Maybe it just needed a, a little time to, to get caught up. Yeah, it probably just had had time to fully pressurize or whatever. Uh, we don't need to put a pump on this because it's you know it's not going over 10 meters high. Um, I do. I am pretty sure though. I checked the rates over here properly because you need 32 per minute. Wait a second. How much did this need per minute? Was it six? I don't remember now. Um, yeah. Okay, so you need six per minute. So we'll just go check these numbers and make sure that I set them up correctly. I'm pretty sure that I did, but... Okay, so you need 32 per minute, so we need a, we need a total of 38 per minute. But this is only producing 30 per minute because this outputs 8 and recycles it back into itself, which is really weird, but it's the way it works. So those numbers should be correct. Hmm. I mean... We shouldn't need to put a pipe on that. There's a huge difference, though, between this one and this one. Uh, I'm sorry, a pump, not a pipe. Yeah, it's it's keeping up now, so it's fine. Look at that thing start up. It's the first time I've ever used one of these. It's crazy. Particle accelerator, baby. High tech. High tech. All right, we're constructing our first little round of plutonium pellets. You're taking in your waste there. So I think we're good. I think we have achieved 100% waste-free nuclear setup, except for what we've already stored. Now, what I could do if I wanted to is if, uh, what happened there? Hmm, I don't know. If we, if, okay, so if I turned off the two nuclear plants, we would still have about 13,000 megawatts, and we're only potentially using a maximum of 10. So what I could do is I could turn off those plants and then feed all that waste back into here to process it, and then once it's all gone, then turn those plants back on, and then we are truly nuclear waste-free. 
Um, and I might do that, because why not, right? We don't need all that extra power at the moment. So I think it kind of makes sense maybe to do that. I don't know what's causing this big failure here. There's something going on. Oh, you know what? I think those little blips might be from my my hover thing, but I don't know what's causing this. That's a big jump too, so I think it might be one of the nuclear plants themselves. So are we short on something over here? it is this one look at that and it's it's a water problem what in the hell's going on with the water so these are all running at normal speed so we have a total of 480 water per minute on a mark 2 pipe and you need 240 per minute and you need 240 per minute Yeah, so that that water can't keep up. This one's doing better. I'm trying to figure out why that is, though, because this is a new problem. I have not seen this issue. Nothing we did over there should have any impact whatsoever on what's happening over here. That is really weird, man. I suppose it's possible that this has been going on for a long time and I just didn't notice it, but... Yeah, I, I don't know. Is there... Are one of these turned off? No, they're all running. Okay. That pipe is full. That pipe is very nearly full. Would it help if we put a pump here? We shouldn't have to, but obviously things aren't working correctly. So let's uh, let's just throw a Mark One pump here. Um, just barely fits right there. <laughs> Okay, so that that filled that up. That's way fuller now. I think this yeah, this is this is climbing. Definitely climbing. All right, well, I mean, I check my power fairly frequently, and I n never noticed that big dip until now. But here again, what the hell did, have we done different that would have changed that? We didn't touch any of those pumps or any of those pipes. I mean, extractors. That's really weird. I don't know. 
maybe, like I said, maybe it's been doing that all along and I just haven't noticed it. That's, that's the only thing that makes reasonable sense, I suppose. But, you know, putting that pump there fixed it, so I guess we're okay. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. Uh, what I'm going to do, like I said, I believe it is I'm going to go ahead and actually shut those nuclear plants down. Run uh, a belt from the storage back down here. Basically just kind of reverse these two. And we'll consume all of that waste, get rid of it. And then once it's all gone, then we'll turn the plants back on and we'll be waste-free. we got to take care of the environment here on Planet Massage 2-3B or whatever the hell it's called. <laughs> uh, he says as uh, he's got tons of gasoline-powered fuel plants over there smoking up the air. And coal, too. But it doesn't seem to accumulate. We still have clear skies, so we're good. Anyway, all right, guys, uh, I think we're going to wrap up the episode here. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll we'll probably do one one more exploration episode. Um, and because we have a few more hard drives to drive, you know, to grab just to just to do it. And um, I might talk a little bit about my plans for um, 1.0 when it comes out to. The first thing that I'm pondering is where I want to start. And I am going to start from the beginning, even going through the tutorial, because, you know, I, I watched the videos that Coffee Scene puts out, and I was watching one at, uh, at during the lunch hour at work. And they said that the tu the tutorial has been redone. All of, all of Ada's um, lines have been completely redone, and that there's some, you know, kind of funny shit and stuff that she says during the tutorial. Uh, so we're going to just start all the way from the beginning, uh, even with the onboarding and the whole thing, you know, so that way we're experiencing the whole thing from start to finish. But anyway, uh, what I was saying is trying to decide where I want to start. I probably, well, I'm definitely not going to start in the Rocky Desert because, of course, that's where we started here. I'm not inclined to start in the Northern Forest only because I did that in my Season 5 Series A and B. The, the really good spot that everybody st starts in, which is right here, has been nerfed, from what I understand. Um, so there's not a whole lot of incentive, I think, to start in Northern Forest. So I'm either going to do Grassy Fields. And again, this is just for starters. This isn't going to be where our main base is going to be. Uh, or I'll do the Dune Desert. And I really like this whole area in through here, if you guys don't know this or you don't remember us going through this. This is all actually very lush almost jungle oasis. Um, it's really pretty in through here and there's tons of resources in the dune desert nearby. Um, so I'm thinking about you know maybe starting there uh, for our starter you know first iron production base or starting you know back in grassy fields. The reason I would do grassy fields is primarily because you know for nostalgic reasons because you know that's where I started when I first started playing the game and it's just kind of kind of a fun place to start, even though it's not necessarily the ideal place. So I'm really kind of thinking between grass, you know, grass fields or, or dune desert. Um, so if you guys have an opinion on that one way or the other, and you'd like me to start in one or the other of those two places, let me know in the comments. And uh, I'm I, I'm not going to promise I'll I'll do that, but I, I would like to know what you guys think about it. Um, or maybe you don't care, and that's fine too. Uh, and we'll go from there. Um, but very excited for 1.0 to come out. I, I'm actually taking the day off from work uh, so I can start right up with it. That's how excited I am about it. Um, and so it should be a lot of fun. All right, guys. Well, that's it for this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video. And we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.